Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi. Welcome to Blind Owl Outdoors. I'm Dan and this is Shannon. And we're looking for a, some sort of a tree with a Y in it for a project here. I guess we'll take this one right here. We'll be back in a second. All right, I'm gonna use the folding saw today instead of a bolo. And we're just gonna take this tree right here. This is one of those cheap Corona saws from Lowe's, but it sure does work fantastic. And then I'm going to take the Y here and cut this off about here to start with. And then we're going to need one more piece to go across the bottom here. About this long. We're over by the highway, you can hear the highway in the background. We'll be back in a second. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a special multi-purpose net for getting bait and things like that out of a, a moving stream. Or another thing you can use it for is to find out what's hatching in a stream, which is very uh, useful to know what kind of bait to use. Another thing you use it for is you can use it in a field to swipe back and forth in the grass to catch like grasshoppers and things like that. So what we're going to do is we have a just a square piece of net. We're going to put a, a, a piece of wood across the bottom that's going to hold the net down to the bottom of the um, stream. So for that we're just going to cut a just a real little notch. Kind of cut it out with the saw a little bit. Just kind of a little depression for the stick to sit into. Probably be easier with a knife. I'm going to go straight across like this. Sort of about here. You're going to take your stick and put it across like that and then tie it on. And something you should always have in your bag and at the very least in your survival kit you should have about 30 or 40 feet of monofilament line. This is 20 pound test. Uh, this stuff's about 12 years old but it's still as good as the day it was bought as long as you keep it out of the sun. And I, if it was me, I would always keep a roll like this in my pack because, you know, very handy for fishing, for tying other things. But what I'm going to do is just take a length of it. And the easiest way to cut monofilament lines with a lighter. And then just kind of, you want to just kind of lash this to the board. Can you come over here, Ron? Okay. Come over here and kind of hold this down. Some, hold this down right over, come over on this side of me. Hold this down, I'm a little helper here. Okay. That'll make it easier to tie. And I'm not going to do any fancy lashing. I'm just going to go back and forth a few times. Actually, it's probably easiest if you go right to the center of your, your string. And it's going to go back and forth a few times. Oops. Easier said than done, I guess. Give it a twist. Go back and forth. Wrap around here. Diagonal. Doesn't have to be real strong, but it's just nice if it's solid. Good idea in your pack 
to carry yourself a piece of netting. This right here is about, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch squares. I'd rather have something a little bit bigger hole than that, like an eighth inch to a three sixteenth inch hole. That way the water would flow through it a little better. But this, this will work just fine. And what we're going to do, instead of folding it over, I think we're just going to cut it off and lash it on with the monofilament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just cut this piece to shape, and I, I want to leave about a good three inches all the way around it, so that I can have a a little pocket in the center here when I'm done after I lash it on. And there's a hole right there, so I'll move, move it over this way. Yeah, something about like that and then I'll just and you can, of course you can do this with your knife or whatever I just have a pair of scissors here handy and this is a very handy thing to have or to be able to make out in the bush um, I used to always keep one at my house so that I could go catch uh, crawdads and little stream insects before I went fishing out in the river uh, I used to live along the Mississippi River back in the States, up in Iowa. And crawdads are a real good bait for catfish. Okay, we'll have that there cut. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of monofilament line. And I suggest just using small pieces about two foot. Otherwise, it, they get all tangled up. And then just fold over the the net over the sticks and run your monofilament line down through a couple holes simple as that you can get it through works a little better with heavier monofilament line but this this is what I have is 20 pound there you go. Come, right, come here, assistant. Can you see that coming through the bottom? Yeah. Okay, grab that. Okay, stand over to the side a little bit. The, either side, doesn't matter. And then we're just going to tie a knot here. This will get us started. Finger. Sure is nice having an assistant. And Shannon's learned all these little tricks that maybe she'll use someday when she gets older, gets around a place where there's some decent fishing. Okay, now it's probably easy if we turn it over this way so we can see the loose end. And I'll let you do that, Shannon. Why don't you come over here on the side here a little bit, and then just come up for the bottom. Problem right there, it's not. Come up through the bottom. Make sure you get through both pieces here, mm -hmm. and just start wrapping it around. Okay, you go ahead and try that. See how you can do. Okay, it's kind of hard to see in the camera. Right through there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's kind of. Hold that tight like that. Just just wrap her around. In fact, you can just go. You can you can skip all the way over to here. Go over two or three inches and go through again. Go over through here. And you're kind of leaning right into the camera, so no one can see what you're doing. But kind of reach around. Okay. That around. Yeah, just like that. You just, all you try and do is just snug it down and go all the way over here to the to right here to the edge. To this part right here. To the end. Right about here. Yeah, much easier with your little fingers, huh? <laughs> okay, and then you wrap it around like this around the edge, and then you're just gonna go. Here, and I guess now we're going to be going down this time. So this time I want to go right about here, 
Work your way all the way down through if you can. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. So it kind of sucks into the corner there. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to tie this piece off. Get off in a double or triple knot. Shannon's pretty good at her knots. I'll hold it for you. Maybe a triple knot. And it's always better if you leave a nice long tag so it's easier to tie. Okay, now wrap around your your net a little bit. There you go. One more right here in the, in the corner, right in the, the center there. We'd call that the crotch, right where the sticks join. Okay. All right, now, now we're going to do the other side here, and what we want to make sure is we, we leave plenty of, oh, there's a big hole here too. Hmm. All right, we'll have to sew that up. We want to make sure you leave enough pocket in here to catch the stuff that you're trying to catch in the, the stream. All right, go right through here where my finger's at. And see, I have a nice pocket in there. here I guess. Alright, and then one one more in the corner here if you can get it. Go this way, run this way though. Make sure you go down around this one here. Down into that one. Get it through. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to wiggle it through. That's the other advantage of having like a, a solid eighth inch hole or a three sixteenth inch hole. It's much easier to get your string through the holes. Got it? Alright, now what we're going to do is we're just going to come across here to the tag of the other one and we'll just tie that off right there little finger that makes it so much simpler to tie a square knot over under and under over one more time and one last one just for good measures okay so Actually, we sewed up the hole pretty good too. All right, so now this is pretty much your finished net. Has a nice little pocket in there. And let me move the camera, and I'll show you a simulated stream and how to use it. All right. Now, what what we'd be doing? Hopefully, if we were doing this in a stream, pretend that this is a a stream flowing through here, and Ideally, you'd want your your Y about this wide. Then the the water's flowing through the rocks. I used to use it going a creek that was about a foot deep, where the rapids would be at. And then I would just go in and like assume this is a rock in the water. I put my net right up below the rock, and then I would turn over the rock in the water and then whatever the water's flowing through here would just flow right through my net and whatever is here crawdads or whatever the current strong enough that it would pull them right into my net and it's real really good for catching crawdads some minnows um, uh, a lot of times you get the the hatch whatever like uh, uh, damsel flies or mayflies or whatever that way you know if you say you're fishing for trout or something then you can um, match whatever the hatch is make your make your lure look like that or use the actual uh, larva for fishing you could probably even eat that stuff if you had to but the, I wouldn't but the stuff like the crawdads and the crayfish, whatever you want to call them, that's all edible. Small minnows are edible. But this is a very easy way to 
get bait and find out what's in the creek. Now, another thing this can be used for is, let's say you were in a, let's say this was, was foot high grass and you're in a meadow. Well, you take your net and just sweep it back and forth like that across the grass in front of you. Every four or five swipes, stop and check and grab the grasshoppers out of them and put them in your pocket or in a little bag or something like that. It works fantastic for stuff like that. And the third thing you can use this for is, let's say you had a, let's say this was a, this was a frog. You know, you could sneak up off the side of the bank and come in and pin down a frog with it. Again, it works much better if it's a little wider. A little wider and maybe just a, a little thinner on the arms. Um, I don't have a name for this. This is just I, this is just kind of a bait net. This is something I've used for. I've used. I've had one like this at, at my house for the last 30 years, and I, I use it all the time. I, I've never used one here in the Philippines because again, this is, there's no fishing here, at least where I'm at. Um, but I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch our videos. I appreciate all the support we've been getting from all the viewers for the Philippine videos and for the bushcraft videos. All the questions and comments you guys have been getting, giving me. I really appreciate the emails because then I can comment directly back to you. You can contact me anytime at blindowloutdoors at gmail.com.